for electrical energy cost, not for the light we got, but for the heat wasted into the environment. That is the reason why incandescent lamps are disappearing from the market these days. They are not energy efficient. They are not energy saving. LED lamps are the opposite. Most of the electrical energy consumed by LED lamps is converted to light energy. No heat is generated. They are not wasting electrical energy in the form of heat into the environment. Therefore, they are energy efficient lamps. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello, sir. Um, based on our previous discussion, um, I tried to learn something about light sources. Great. What did you learn? What did you read about light sources? Um, I <coughs> read that light sources are sources which emit light. Mm -hmm. And some examples are lamps, sun, bulbs, etc. Yeah, these are... Uh, some are natural, some are man-made light sources. Yeah. What about the moon? Um, the moon is not a direct light source because it reflects the light it receives yeah. from the sun. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, what do light sources require in order to emit light? I think they require light energy. Light energy is something that they are giving off. But there must be an input energy in some other form. A chemical energy? In yeah. case of bulbs and lamps? In the case of bulbs, it's electrical energy. Yeah, electrical electrical energy, energy is the input, the output is? Light energy. Yes. What about in the case of um, kerosene lamp? In the case of kerosene lamp, the input is chemical. Yeah. And the output is? light and sometimes heat yeah light and heat good if we say this much about light sources today's discussion is about energy saving what do you understand by energy saving mm, i under by energy saving we mean that reducing the amount of energy we use yeah or using less energy than the usual energy. Yeah, reducing the amount of energy we use, not wasting, yeah. is energy saving. But we cannot reduce the energy requirement to zero. Is that not? Yeah. The concept we want to see today is without reducing the output we want, we want to reduce the energy input. For example, we have different bulbs here. You see, this is the oldest type of light bulb. Yeah. Since the time of Edison, this kind of bulbs are not changed significantly in terms of the principle by which they work. How do this kind of lamps generate light? These are incandescent lamps in general. Yeah. You can see very thin filament that is mounted between the two electric poles. Yeah. Now, when current is flowing, this wire is heated up. Yeah. So when it is heated to a very, very high temperature, it will glow. Yeah. It gives off light. Therefore, the mechanism by which light is emitted, this kind of bulbs is incandescence. Incandescence is conversion of thermal energy, heat, into light at high temperatures. Yeah. This is how light is generated by incandescent lamps. 
Do you have this kind of house at home? Yeah. Okay. Let's see the next type of lamps. Say type two lamps. We will call this, this lamp type two lamps. This kind of lamps are known as compact fluorescent lamps. You know, earlier fluorescent lamps were in the form of a long tube. Yeah. But these are compact ones. The tube is in spiral form. How is light generated in this kind of lamps? Electric current enters into the lamp through these two terminals. Yeah. This electric current emits electrons from one end to the other. When electrons are moved, the gas inside the tube is excited. Excited means electrons of the gas are transferred to higher energy levels. But they will not stay there. They will come down. When they are coming down, they emit photons. These photons emitted by the gas inside the tube bombard the fluorescent materials. This fluorescent material, when bombarded by those photons, will emit visible light. This is how light is generated by compact fluorescent lamps. Look, the mechanisms are different. That one is by heating light, yeah. metal. This one is by exciting and de-exciting gases. This is the second type of lamps. We will say it type to lamp. The third one is the modern one. You can see these yellow spots here. These are known as light emitting diodes. Light emitting diodes are available in many electronic gadgets. You might have noticed this kind of things on cameras, yeah. indicators. The nature of this kind of indicators and this light emitting diodes are the same. They may emit different colors based on their construction. Look, these are specially synthesized materials, man-made materials, purposefully designed to emit light when there is a potential difference across their terminals. Now, we can generate light in three different mechanisms using electricity, yeah. correct? So, light can be generated from electricity by different mechanisms. Yeah. Now, uh, today we will investigate which lamp generates a given amount of light for less amount of electricity consumption. This is energy saving. Yeah. It's very important. How will we do this? We'll use this kind of arrangement. Here we have a light bulb holder. Here you have a solar panel. What is a solar panel? It is a special gadget which receives light. And generates a potential yeah. difference. Yeah. Look, when this is lighted up, when there is light on this surface, it generates a potential difference, a voltage. You can see this. Look, these two wires are coming out of this, and we are connecting them to a, milli a multimeter. One part is connected here, the other part is connected there. Okay, we have a solar panel here. What is a solar panel? It is a special gadget which receives light and converts it into a potential difference or yeah. voltage. Yeah, it converts it to a potential difference. It serves us like a dry cell, yeah. any source of electricity. Look, look, Emmanuel. 
the voltage reading on that multimeter is 0.102 volts. Yeah. Because this solar panel is illuminated by the light in the room. Yeah. Therefore, if I w look, when there is no light reaching, yeah, it becomes the voltage zero. becomes zero. Yeah. When there is light, the room light, the voltage becomes Point. nearly 0 0.1 yeah. volt. Yeah. Therefore, it is true when light reaches the surface of the solar panel, voltage is generated, as can be seen from the meter. Yeah. Look, I will hold it again. It will be reduced. Yeah. We have this facility. Yeah. We can measure the output of the solar panel. Yeah. If I put one of the bulbs randomly, look, suppose now put put it on. Yeah. There is light. Yeah. Look at the voltage output. Earlier it was zero point one. Yeah. Now it's around 1.2. Yeah. Therefore, the additional amount of voltage generated by the presence of this uh, light is 1.1. It's around 1.2. It's around 1.2 because this is around 1.3 minus 0 0.1. It will be around 1.3. You know, it's increasing. We have yeah. to wait for some time. Yeah. Why? because this kind of lamps are getting brighter and brighter as time passes. Therefore, the ultimate, the final output is when it reaches its peak value. Look, now it's stabilizing around 1.4. Yeah. Now, that is about the output of this light lamp. Yeah. In order to get that output, we need an input. This light bulb requires electrical input. Yeah. How do we manage to measure the electrical input to this lamp? Okay. Now you can see the output is stabilized to 1.38. Yeah. Therefore, the additional voltage generated due to this artificial light is 1.38 minus 0 0.1. 1. Yeah. It will be around 1.28. Yeah. That is about the output. <laughs> but this lamp requires electrical input to give out that amount of light. Yeah. How do we measure this electrical input? We use diameter to measure it. Yes. Look, look at this circuit. This is the cable going to the lamp. Yeah. One of the wire is connected directly to the source. Yeah. The other wire is connected to the ammeter via this red string. Yeah. And from the ammeter, we come to this one. It's a complete circuit. Therefore, this ammeter reads the current that is flowing through the lamp circuit to measure the input energy or power required. Now, we know the current from this one. Yeah. The voltage that is coming to our home is 220 volts. Yeah. Therefore, the voltage is always the same. the same for all gadgets because we are connecting them in parallel. Yeah. Therefore, you have the input voltage and you have the input current to the lamp. Yeah. You have the output of the lamp in the form of potential difference yeah. read by the multimeter. Yeah. So, once we have the output 
and the input for each bulb, we can compare which one is energy efficient. Do you understand our method now? Yeah. Do you have any question? No. Very good. So we have measured and seen the input voltage is 220 volts. Yeah. We'll measure the input current for each and we'll measure the output for each bulb and determine which one of these three is more energy efficient. Now you go to your drawing board and do the calculation. Okay. You are comfortable with the method? Yeah. Great. Now we are ready to collect data yeah. and compare. That this is investigation. Eh? Yeah. Which lamp is energy saving? Now, one thing we need to note is that the solar panel is generating voltage. Yeah. Now, the light arrangement is changed from the previous one. Therefore, our voltage output due to the background light is 0 0.06 volt. Correct? There is 0 0.06 volt. W not this one. 0 0.06 volt is so the background. From the background light. Yeah, from the background. So when we write the voltage output, we will reduce 0 0.06 voltage, right? Yeah. Excellent. Background <coughs> light, 0 0.06 voltage. V. Perfect. Now, let's start from bulb one. Okay. This is bulb one. I will put bulb one into the lamp holder. Care has to be taken not to move the solar panel and the lamp holder. Do you know that the reason for that? Because it will mislead us to our calculation. Sure. You know, the intensity of light decreases very fast if we recede from the source. So this distance has to be the same for all bulbs when we are comparing the bulbs. Okay, now the incandescent lamp bulb one is in place, so I will put it on. Okay, now the bulb is on. I will tell you the input current first for bulb one. The input current here is 0 0.23 0 0.23 milliampere. The input voltage for the lamp is 220 volts because it's the same for all. Yeah, so okay, 220 volt is the same for all lamps. Yeah, so. We will calculate power input later on, or I can help you to calculate the power input of this. I will, uh, the power input will be 220 volt times, times 0 0.3. 0 .3. Yeah. 0 0.23 multiplied by 220. Yeah. That will be 50.6 milliwatt. Milliwatt, perfect. Milliwatt. Therefore, 50.6 milliwatt electric power is consumed to generate light in this lamp. Yeah. Now, let's see the output. The output, as can be seen from here, it's a huge amount of output. The output voltage is now 2.96. So but we have to subtract 0 0.06. Yeah. Therefore, 2.90 is the output voltage. Okay. The output, yeah. 2.90. Now, we have obtained 2.90 voltage for the output. output voltage for 50.6 milliwatt. Yeah. W now, we will disregard the units because we are doing comparisons only. Yeah. 
We don't need actual values. Therefore, 2.9 divided by 50.6 will be 5.7% input over output. So we now multiply this one by 100? Yes, because it is 0 0.057. We, after multiplying by 100, it will be 5.7. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Now, let's do the same for the second lamp, type 2 lamp. I will remove type 2 lamp. Look, it's very, very hot. <laughs> it's very hot. Even difficult to remove it from the lamp. I will use a paper, tissue, the tissue paper. I, I am using a tissue paper, don't worry. Okay, this is very hot. This is very hot. It's very hot. Oh. Now let's go to for the second lamp, Emmanuel. Okay. This lamp is compact fluorescent lamp. Light generating mechanism in this lamp is different from the previous one. Yeah. Incandescent lamp heats the metal filament to a very, very high temperature. Then it starts to glow. This one uses a different principle. Yeah. It excites mercury vapor inside the tube to generate light as we discussed it earlier. Yeah. Now let's put on. Okay. Okay. What is the first thing we want to read? Input current. Yeah. The current input for lamp two is zero point zero five milliampere. It is connected to the mains, therefore the input voltage is 220. Yeah. The power input is it's 220 mm. times 0 0.05. Yeah. Can you multiply it by uh, <laughs> orally? 0 0.05. It's around 11. Multiplied by 220. Perfect. It is power input is 11.0 milliwatt. Okay. The output voltage is, as you can see, 1.42 millivolt. So Therefore, it has to be 1.36. Yeah, 1.36. Perfect. 1.36. The meter reads 1.42, but due to the background light, yeah. we have already 0 0.06 volt. So the net voltage generated by the solar cell due to the presence of the light generated by the compact fluorescent lamp is 1.36. Now let's go to the calculation. Yeah. 1.36 for 11. Yeah. This is a rough comparison. Yeah. We disregard the units. 0 0.36 divided by 11. 11. This is 12.36%. Percent. Great. Now, the problem, the, the issue related to compact fluorescent lamp is over. I will remove yeah. it from the lamp holder and then I will look. This is hot but it is not as hot as that one yeah. i can handle this one look this is not very hot now it's time for the third lamp let's measure the input the output and the efficiency as usual look this is the third lamp it's uh, made of light em emitting diodes so for the third lamp the input is 
0.04 milliampere milliampere the input voltage is 220 volt because it is connected to the mains and look at the output the output in First this let's case calculate the power input oh the power input sure you are right so 0 0.04 multiplied by 220, 220 is around 8.8 8.8 8. yeah milliwatt yeah. now we have 1.91 volt as an output 1.85 Now let's calculate the efficiency. Yeah. 1.85 divided by 8.8. 8.8. 21.02%. Now you have the complete data. Yeah. Now you are ready to compare the three bulbs. Yeah. The output voltage in the form of millivolt for the solar panel tells us some information about what we get. Yeah. But the complete picture is obtained from the ratio of the output per input. Yeah. So we can rank the three bulbs in order of their energy efficiency. Yeah. Which one gives us light for a smallest amount of electrical energy consumed the third one the third one yeah. therefore the third one becomes the first yeah the, the second, second one, one is it's better yes it's better yeah. the worst yeah. one is the first one the first one is the incandescent lamp is the worst yeah look amanel when I pull this thing out of the bulb holder, it was very, very hot. Yeah. And that heat, I was unable to hold it even. I used a tissue paper to remove it. Yeah. Do we need heat from a light bulb? No, it's unnecessary. We only need light. L yeah. Therefore, the electrical energy converted to heat energy in this kind of bulbs is a and waste of energy. Yeah. It's not useful one. Yeah. These days, manufacturers of bulbs are shifting from incandescent lamps to LED, LED yeah. lamps. Yeah. And still, compact. the compact fluorescent lamps are still also in the market. Yeah. So the future of the, the lighting industry will be <laughs> LEDs. Yeah. They are very energy efficient. Yeah. Now, in our homes should be using energy saving lamps yeah. energy saving is very important concept we have seen how different lamps change a given electrical energy into light form you know we use light bulbs to convert electrical energy to light energy but a given amount of electrical energy converted to light energy is different for different lamps. That means lamps are giving us light energy from the electrical energy they consumed in different percentages. Our experiment has empirically shown that Incandescent lamps are converting electrical, the minimum amount of electrical energy to light energy. Most of the electrical energy consumed by light bulbs is converted to heat. They are very wasteful lamps. We do not want heat from a bulb. What we want from a bulb is only light energy. Unfortunately, by their design, Incandescent lamps are heating a filament. When a filament is heated to many hundreds of degrees centigrade, light is generated. Therefore, we pay for electrical energy cost 
not for the light we got, but for the heat wasted into the environment. That is the reason why incandescent lamps are disappearing from the market these days. They are not energy efficient. They are not energy saving. LED lamps are the opposite. Most of the electrical energy consumed by LED lamps is converted to light energy. No heat is generated. They are not wasting electrical energy in the form of heat into the environment. Therefore, they are energy efficient lamps. The compact fluorescent lamps are not as energy efficient as the LEDs, but they are far better than the incandescent lamps in terms of energy saving. This is a very practical experiment and wonderful experiment. I think you have enjoyed this experiment. And it is a practical one. So we finish our topic on energy saving with this conclusion and have a nice time. See you next time by another experiment. Thank you, Emmanuel. Bye.